So, good morning. Ang ato naman, Module 3 or Instrumentation. So, meron tayong mga principles ng pagme-measure sa ating clinical chemistry. Una is colorometric. Under colorimetric is photometry. So, photometry is the measurement of the intensity of light. So, light from a bulb or light bulb contains the entire visible spectrum. So, yun yung sa ating combination ng light. Materials absorb light at one wavelength and reflects the other parts of the spectrum. So, dito sa photometry, ang minemeasure natin is yung light or yung light absorbances niya. So, reflectance photometry is the measurement of light reflected from solid surfaces. So, the principle is light is directed from an unpolished surface or solid surface of sample. Some light is absorbed and the rest is reflected. Light reflected is measured with a detector and a filter. The more light absorbed, the less light reflected. Reflectance photometer or reflectance photometry is nonlinear. Therefore, a microprocessor is used to transform the data to a linear response. So, nagkakaroon pa siya ng computation. So, dito minemeasure niya yung intensity kung gano'ng karaming light yung naproproduce ng isang Reaction. So, sa reaction, doon na natin madedetermine yung analyte na minemeasure natin. So, para siyang ganito. So, usually ginagamit siya sa dipsticks or sa dipstick reagent pads, yung sa urine. So, yung ating mga automated urine dipstick readers, meron silang ganito sa loob. So, ito yung pad. Pamalalagyan nila yun ng ilaw. Tapos, depende sa intensity ng color nito, doon sa absorbed light niya magpuproduce siya ng light reflected. Yung light reflected, pupunta sa sa readout device. So, ito yung magme-measure. Tapos, since hindi nga siya linear, ikakalculate pa siya ng ating mga microprocessor. Saka siya magbibigay ng result. So, after mo magkaroon ng process nito, itong result, yun na yung ating nire-release or yung nire-release ng machine para i-interpret pa natin kung consistent ba siya sa ating data. So, light. Light is an electromagnetic radiation with a range of wavelengths between 390, ito yung violet, and 770, red, nanometers. So, NM means nanometer. Capable of stimulating the object's subjective sensation of light. So, yung light na nakikita natin is approximately 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. Less than 400 nanometers is the ultraviolet region, and greater than 700 nanometers is the infrared region. So, etong buong eto spectrum nato, ginagamit natin siya. Eto yung nakikita natin. Eto depende sa test or sa analyte kung ano wavelength yung ating gagamitin. So, bawat analyte iba-iba yung ginagamit. Kaya isineset pa natin yung machine or pinoprogram natin yung machine kung anong wavelength yung gagamitin. Next, so parts of a wave. So, wave yung sa light. Amplitude. So, ito yung distance from the midpoint of the crest or through to the midpoint of the vibration. Mamaya, ito na natin. Meron ditong image. Crest. Ano yung crest? So, yung high points of the wave kung hanggang saan umaabot yung wave. Next, through. Low point of the wave. So, pababa naman siya. Wavelength, ito yung distance between the top of the crest and the top of the next. So, yung pagitan niya sa dalawang wave. So, distance from any point of the wave to another indication uh, and to another identical point to a next wave. So, siya nga yung distance. Frequency, how often a vibration occurs. So, the lower the wave, the wave frequency, the longer the wavelength. So, ganito yung itsura niya. So, ito yung wavelength. Ito yung crest, di ba? Pinakamataas. Through, yung pinakang mababa. So, crest. Uh, crest, through. Tapos, yung wavelength is pagitan ng dalawang crest. Ayan. So, ito, kita nyo. Wavelength. Ito yung pagitan nito. Tsaka nito. Yung amplitude, ang sabi is the distance from the midpoint. So, midpoint ito. Yung line, yung ating midpoint. So, the distance from the midpoint of the crest or through to the midpoint of vibration. 
So, midpoint, tapos middle ng crest, o yung highest point din ito. O baba. So, ito yung amplitude natin. Wavelength, amplitude, ito yung ating wave. So, frequency, kung ganam kadaming ganon. Pag mas mabilis yung frequency natin, maikli yung wavelength. Pag mahaba yung ating frequency or maunti, nahaba ang ating wavelength. So, spectrum ng colors. Ano yung nakikita natin? Visible light from 400 to 700 nanometers. Ito yung mga colors na nakikita natin. So, sa rainbow, kapag nag-ano ka ng prism, ito yung nahahati. Pababa is the ultraviolet. So, sa ultraviolet, kasama pa dito yung ating X-rays, gamma rays, and cosmic rays. Infrared naman, yung pataas ng 700 nanometers. So, infrared, microwaves, radar, radio, and broadcast bands. So, ito yung mga hindi natin nakikita yung mga black. As ito, yung visible sa atin. So, per color, may specific wavelength siya kagaya nung nakita nyo kanina. So, wavelength in nanometer. Katumbas siyang color, katumbas na refracted light. Ito yung color niya, pero ito yung nakikita natin. So, 400 to 435 is violet. Ang reflected light or nakikita natin is yellow or green. 435 to 500 blue, reflected light is yellow. 500 to 570 nanometers, green, reflected light is red. 500 to 600 nanometers, ah sorry, 570 to 600 is yellow and blue. 600 to 630 orange, kanya reflected light is green to blue. 600 to 700, 630 to 700 nanometers red, reflected light is green. So, yung una yung ating photometry na reflectance photometer. Next is spectrophotometry. So, yung spectrophotometry involves the measurement of light transmitted by a solution. So, yung ating solution, ito yung ating combination ng sample and ng ating reagents to determine the concentration of the light absorbing substance in the solution. So, pag nagkaroon kasi ng combination yung ating sample at yung ating mga uh, chemicals, yung ating reagents, nagkakaroon yun ng light absorbed substance or yung ma-absorb, may ma-absorb siya kasi may content siya doon sa loob. So, yung ma-absorb na light, mababawasan yung transmitted light. Yung transmitted light, yung ating measure So, it measures the light intensity in a narrow, narrower wavelength. Yung isa kasi yung ating reflectance photometry, automatic, yung light na i-reflect niya, yun na yung measure Eto, may specific tayong wavelengths na may measure So, measures the array of lights or radiant energy absorbed or transmitted. Kapag absorbed, may calculations pa siya. Pag transmitted, ganun din, based kasi siya sa absorbance. So, may formula tayo na sinusunod. Then, yun yung ating i-compute pa ulit. Then, binibigyan na ng machine. Or machine na yung bahala. Usually, nag-compute ngayon since automated tayo ibibigay na niya agad yung result. Tapos, sa result, either naka-SI na siya or yung ating units pa. So, pwedeng i-convert or pwedeng yun na yung diretsyo natin i-release. So, spectrophotometry measures the light transmitted by the analyte in order to determine the concentration of light absorbing analyte. So, yun niya. May measure niya yung light. So, ito yung itsura. Ito yung mga sinauna. Ito. Ito, meron tayo nito sa laboratory. Teco yung kanyang brand or yung brand niya, niya. Then, ito incubator. Tapos, dito natin ilalagay yung sample. Ipaprogram natin siya bago gamitin. Ito yung kanyang maliit na screen. So, sa program, pwede natin lagyan siya ng reagent blank, color blank, kung anong wavelength yung gagamitin. Tapos, napaprogram din to na mag-auto-calculate na para paglabas dito sa printer, automatic calculated na yung results, pwede na nating i-release after i-type or i-compile. So, types of spectrophotometer. May dalawa tayong type ng ating spectrophotometer. Una yung ating single beam spectrophotometer. So, yung single beam is the simplest type of absorption spectrophotometer designed to make one measurement at a time at one specified wavelength. So, parang yung ating spectrophotometer kanina yan, single beam. Isa lang, isa-isa lang ang kanyang i-measure. So, the absorption maximum of the analyte must be known in advance 
when a single beam instrument is used. So, meron kasi tayong tinatawag na arc or yung linearity niya kung hanggang saan yung kayang i-measure. So, dapat alam mo na or sa manufacturer naman yun kung gano'ng kataas yung measurement na kaya niya. Kapag tumaas kasi siya sa measurement na yun, hindi na siya mag-measure ng specific. Kung baga may limit, may hangganan. Hanggang halimbawa, ang kalalang niyang i-measure is up to 100. So, pag yung uh, analyte mo, yung measurement niya talaga is lampas 100, halimbawa 150, usually ang ibibigay pa rin niya sa you is 100. So, kapag ganun, dinidilute natin yung sample with a diluting agent, usually distilled water. Depende na lang kung merong ibibigay ang manufacturer na specific sa machine or sa test. Pero pwede yung distilled water. Tapos, i pagkatapos natin i-measure siya doon sa machine, sa spectrophotometer, i-co-compute natin siya sa reciprocal ng dilution. Halimbawa, dinilute natin yung 150 na sample sa 2. 1 is to 2. So, reciprocal of the dilution is 2. So, yung actual result niya is ita times natin yung nabasa ng machine. Halimbawa, yung nabasa ng machine is 75 times 2. So, yung result niya is 150. Next is the double beam spectrophotometer. So, this is an instrument that splits the monochromatic light into two components. One beam passes through the sample and the other passes through the reference solution or the blank. So, yung reference solution natin is yung ginagamit natin na pang-compute yung standard natin. Then, blank is either water para sa uh, zero blank. Yung sa tubes kasi yun, kumbaga yung reflectance ng ating container, yung either test tube or cuvette, which we discussed previously, para malaman natin kung ilan yung interference ng alalagyan ng container. Then, the reference solution is yung standard natin, yung reagent naman. Kung baga, pwede natin i-zero yung absorbance ng reagent para yung analytes na lang yung ating mamemeasure. The additional beam corrects for variation in light sources intensity. So, ganito yung itsura niya. Yung double beam in space, ito yung una, double beam in space, uses two photodetectors. So, sabay siya na nagmemeasure. One beam, for the sample beam and the other for the reference beam. So, halimbawa, ito na yung light source natin. Slits para pumasok sa prism ay isang ilaw lang or makoconcentrate natin yung light. Then, another slit para yung diffracted light kasi hindi na mapasama. Then, mirrors para ma-separate niya yung beam. Since double beam siya, isa papunta sa sample. Next, is papunta sa reference cell or yung ating Uh, standard. So, detector, ito yung pan-detect ng light galing dito sa sample. Automatic, pupunta siya sa computer, magme-measure siya, magkakaroon siya ng result. So, ratio kasi, depende doon sa formula na ginagamit, yung ating Beer's Law, ikakalculate na yan ng machine, tapos magkakaroon na ng result. The other type of our spectrophotometer is double beam in time. Ito naman pinagkaiba, uses only one photodetector and the alternately passes the monochromatic light through the sample cuvette. So, yung cuvette, yung ating lalagyan, either plastic or glass. Then, the reference cuvette using a chopper or rotating sector mirror. So, rotating para i-separate niya or i-focus niya kung kanino muna i-measure. So, pwedeng sample. Tapos, reflector naman or pumunta naman siya sa standard. So, magkahiwalay siyang mini-measure. Mirror, para pumunta sa single na detector or sa single readout device. Tapos magkakompute na ulit siya at magkakaroon ng result. So, the parts of our spectrophotometer. So, light source. Siya yung nagpa-provide ng polychromatic light or yung marami pa siyang iba't ibang color or yung ating uh, wavelength. Then, most must generate sufficient and consistent regent energy or power to measure the analyte of interest. So, dito muna manggagaling yung ilaw. Mamaya meron dito nung uh, sample ng itsura, yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng ating parts ng spectrophotometer. So, the light source is an intense beam of light that is directed through the monochromator and the sample. 
So this gives accurate absorbance measurements through its absorbance range. Its response to change light in light intensity must be linear. So yung linearity pwede naman itong i-calculate. So meron tayong two types of ang ating light source. Ang first type is the continuum source emits radiation that changes in intensity most widely used in the laboratory. So pwede mong paltan-paltan yung intensity niya. Examples niya, tungsten. So tungsten is either halogen or iodide lamp commonly used for visible or near infrared region. Visible or near infrared region ibig sabihin yung wavelength. Ito yung kaya niya. Deuterium lamp provides UV radiation less than 400 and the xenon lamp produces a continuum source of energy of radiation which covers both UV and the visible range so depende kung ano yung analytes na ginagamit mo next is the light line source emits limited radiation and wavelength uses used in atomic absorption or molecular and fluorescent spectrophotometry examples niya is mercury and sodium vapor lamps or laser. So yung ating laser kasi is an acronym for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So may ibig sabihin pala yung ating laser. Next part is the entrance slit. Yung nakita nyo kanina. Ayan, eto. Pwede tong entrance slit. Eto mas maganda. Entrance, then the exit slit. So entrance slit minimizes unwanted or stray light and prevents the entrance of scattered light into the monochromator system. So binablock niya yung light na hindi galing do sa ating light at yung emissions niya from different locations. So kagaya ito, light source. Di ba yung light niya pwede doon ang punta, yung directions? So meron tayong slit para dito lang papasok yung light na kailangan natin. Pag madami kasing light, pwede siya magkaroon ng interference sa ating pagbabasa or sa ating pagme-measure ng sample. So, ang stray light is any light or any wavelength outside the band transmitted the mono by the monochromator. Does not originate from the monochromatic source, causes absorbance error. So, kapag yung ilaw na galing sa labas ng machine, yun, mga stray light. Causes absorbance error. So, limits the maximum absorbance that the spectrophono photometer can achieve and is the most common cause of loss in linearity of high analyte concentration. So, kailangan wala tayong stray light. Monochromator. So, yung monochromator is yung nagsa-separate ng different wavelengths ng light. So, types of monochromator. It's either prism. Yung ating prism is a wedge shape, piece of glass, quartz, or sodium chloride. So, the prism can be rotated allowing only the desired wavelength to pass through the exit slit. A narrow, narrow light focused on a prism is refracted as it enters the more denser glass. So, anong itsura niya? So, ganito, yung prism. So, sa prism, hinihiwalay natin yung combined light para makuha natin yung desired light or yung wavelength na gagamitin para sa measurement. So, depende sa pwesto nito kung ano yung wavelength na magbabounce papunta sa ating sample. So, yun, parang ganito. So, light, mahiwalay siya to different gradients of the light. Next is diffraction gratings. So, ito yung most commonly used. Has better resolution than prism. Made by cutting grooves or slit into an aluminized surface of a flat piece of crown glass. So, wavelengths are bent as they pass through the sharp corner. So, it is made up of grooves and slits. So, grooves for the refracting, refraction, and slits for diffraction. Anong itsura niya? So, mga ganito lang siya kaliliit. Yung kanina kasi yung malaki pa yung prism. So, ito yung mga cuts lang. Yan. So, depende ko ano yung i-diffract niya na light. Kung ano yung kailangan nating color or wavelength. Diffraction grating. So, so magkakaibang wavelength. Next is the filter. Simplest least expensive but it is also the least precise so made by placing semi-transparent silver films on both sides of the dilute dielectric such as a magnesium fluoride 
produce monochromatic light based on the principle of constructive interference of waves. So, dependent ito sa wavelengths. So, light waves enter one side of the filter and that's reflected at the second surface. So, sa kabila. Yan. So, filters. Pagpasok, paglabas niya, iba na yung kanyang wavelength. Next part is the exit slit. So, the exit slit controls the width of the light beam. So, parang ganun din siya para kontrolado natin yung lalabas. Bandpass is the total range of wavelengths transmitted. Accurate absorbance measurement requires a bandpass less than one-fifth of the natural bandpass of the spectrophotometer. So, kailangan natin one-fifth lang. Spectral uh, purity of the spectrophotometer is reflected by the bandpass. The narrower, narrower the bandpass, the greater the resolution. So, exit slits allows only a narrow fraction of, of the spectrum to reach the sample cuvette. Cuvette. So, cuvettes yung ating container or yung pinaglalagyan ng ating sample and the solution or yung ating reagents. So, cuvette holds the solution to which concentration is to be measured. It also called as absorption, analytical, or the sample cell. So, meron tayong different types naman ng cuvettes. Number one, Alumina silicate glass. So this is the most commonly used. Can be used within 350 to 2000 nanometers. Transmits light effectively at wavelengths greater than 200 nanometers. Next, quartz and plastic. Used for measurement of solution requiring visible and ultraviolet spectra. So depende sa machine, depende sa manufacturer, depende sa test kung ano yung kailangan nating cuvette. Boros silicate glass, ito naman is for alkaline solutions. Alkaline solutions should not be left standing in cuvettes for long, long periods, because alkali slowly dissolves glass, producing etching. So, nagkakagasgas siya. So, and may gasgas ang ating glass na container, magkakaroon siya ng problems in reflecting light, kasi pwedeng i-reflect niya yun sa kaibang parts, or magkakaroon ng gas gas or yung ano uh, interference light interference so magkakaroon ng an accuracy sa ating result next is soft glass for acidic solutions naman siya next part of our, uh, our spectrophotometer is the photodetector so the photodetector dete uh, detects the amount of light that passes through the sample in the cubet so after nung buong setup after dumaan sa cuvette, sa photodetector, babasahin yung ating light. Ito na yung nagdaan, yung light na nanggaling sa ating sample. Tapos, i-compute, after measurement nito, i-compute na siya ng ating machine. So, detects and converts transmitted light into the pho into photoelectric energy. At ito na yung kinakalculate ng ating mga machines. So, again, meron tayong different types of photodetectors. First type is the barrier layer cell, photocell or photovoltaic cell, voltaic cell. Simplest detector, least expensive but is temperature sensitive. Used in filter photometers with a wide band pass. Basic phototransducers that is used in detecting and measuring radiations in the visible region. So composed of selenium on a plate of iron covered with transparent layer of silver. Has a maximum sensitivity of about 550 nanometer and the response falls to about 10% of the maximum at 350 to 750 nanometers. So maganda siyang gamitin for 550 nanometers. Usually, hanggang dito yung natatanong eh. Simplest detector, least expensive and tensure temperature sensitive. Next is the phototube. Phototube contains cathode and anode enclosed in glass case. It has a photosensitive material that gives off electron when light energy strikes it. So, requires external voltage for operation. So, manggagaling pa sa labas yung kuryente na gagamitin para sa phototube. Next, the photomultiplier tube. Ito naman. So, most commonly used detector measures visible and UV region. Excellent sensitivity and rapid response because this detects a very low level of light. 
sa photo multiplier kasi parang minumultiply niya yung light na nakukuha niya para ma-read out natin yung kanyang sensitivity. Yung kahit maunti yung sensitivity or mababa, kaya niyang basahin. Limited to measuring low power radiations because intense light causes irreversible damage to the photoelectric surface. So may burn out is if exposed to right to room light. So ingatan mag mo siyang i-expose sa ating ilaw. Photodiode, not as sensitive as the photo multiplier tube but with excellent linearity. Measures the light at multi at a multitude of wavelengths but detects less amount of light. Has lower dynamic range and high noise compared to photo multiplier tube. Most useful as a simultaneous mechanical detector. So parang pang extra lang natin muna siya. Next is the readout device. So the readout dis device displays the output of the detection system. So yung light na na-measure kanina pagkatapos dumaan sa ating parts, i-measure na ng ating readout device or yung readout device na yung ating magdi-display para sa display natin. Pwedeng galvanometer a meter and LED display. So, ito na yung ating itsura ng uh, yung part sa loob ng spectrophotometer. So, basic instrumentation of spectrophotometer. So, light source. Depende kung ano yung light source na gagamitin natin. Siyempre, magpuproduce siya ng light at siyempre, ito ay scattered kasi kung saan-saan pa siya pwede pumunta. So, meron tayong collimeter or pwede slit lang din ito para makonsentrate natin or ma-focus natin yung light kung saan natin gustong papuntahin, syempre. So, pupunta na siya sa monochromator. Then, the monochromator, ihiwalay niya yung wavelengths, kung ano yung, syempre, lahat ng wavelengths after manggaling sa light. So, slit, or kung anong wavelength selector natin para ma-focus kung ano yung wavelength kaila na kailangan natin. So, pinoprogram lang to sa machine. Usually, kapag automated or fully automated na yung ating spectrophotometer, hindi na natin kailangan mag-program-program ng mga wavelength. Automatic na siya na nakaprogram sa test na gagamitin natin. So, halimbawa, may sample ka, iseselect mo na lang kung anong test na kailangan mo. For example, so zoom. Tapos, yung machine na automatically will select the wavelength that will be used for measuring the so zoom. So, ganun din para sa iba't ibang test na kailangan natin. Kapos na kapag kagaya ng no, uh, spectrophotometer na meron tayo, yung simple lang, every test, kailangan pa natin i-program kung ano yung kailangan nating Wavelength. So, yun yung manual or semi-automated lang kapag tayo pa yung magpro-program sa kanya pa ulit-ulit. Cuvet. Ito na yung container kung saan nakalagay yung sample. Detector cell or the photo cell. Ito yung magme-measure. Tapos display. Ito na yung pinaglalagyan or kung saan natin makikita yung sample. Usually, pwede pa natin dagdagan yung nakasunod. Printer. So, pwede natin i-print yung result na makukuha natin for encoding or kung yun na yung ating nire-release. So, encoding kapag itatay pa natin siya sa computer, uh, pwede sa computer yung ating LIS, Laboratory Integrated System, pwede mag-convert siya sa units na kailangan natin or pwede yung unit na galing na sa machine, yung automatic or yun na yung i-release natin. Pag maganda yung laboratory, fully automated, after mo mag-measure dito, so hindi ka na din magpa-program ng uh, analyte na kailangan mo kasi malimit, barcoded na. So, kapag barcoded na yung ating sample, yung sa laboratory integrated system, doon na naka-encode yung barcode, automatic yung machine na yung bahala magtuloy-tuloy papunta sa ganito. So, lahat ng test, barcoded, maraming cuvette kasi magkakaiba yung, uh, uh, doon, yung reagents na ginagamit per analyte. Kaya, madami yung cuvette tapos magme-measure na siya depende sa reaction time. Machine na yung bahala, automatic i-measure, automatic pupunta na sa iyong pag-release ng result. So, ang gagawin mo na lang, ilalagay mo yung sample, pipindutin mo run, itcha-check mo yung sample, after mag-run, itcha-check mo yung results, itcha-check mo kung tali siya, kung okay yung resulta, if may errors, pwede mo i-rerun, or i-rerun mo ulit, para mo double check, if okay, then, i-release na natin. So, things to consider, so light shield, light shield is used to protect the cuvette from unwanted light that may cause measurement errors. So, pwede itong i-shield or itago. Usually, mga takip or meron pang additional na cover yung ating machines para hindi ito mapupuntahan ng light. So, pag napuntahan pa siya ng light, magkakaroon ng errors dito sa pagdedetect. So, kung mapapansin nyo dito, 
mas intense yung color. Then after pumunta siya sa sample, naglalighten or nababawasan yung intensity ng light. Holmium oxide or didymium filters, they are used to check wavelength calibrations of spectrophotometer kung tama yung wavelength. Nickel 2 sulfate, solutions with high cut-off wavelength for, for the detection of stray light. So, nilalagay natin siya kung para ma-check kung may stray light. So, ito mga nalabas yan sa board exam. Okay, so, tigil muna dito. Then, next time, next uh, video, we'll proceed to Beer's Law and the other principles or other measuring techniques. Thank you.